Hi again, it's Mark from Germany, as you noticed from my accent. And I'm a professional skills coach and also a YouTube presenter for many years, but till now only in German language, so this is new ground for me. But I have some good tips for you and I'm lucky to share it. Yeah, and you could think what's now the next bunny hop tutorial? Is it we had so many? Is it a good thing to have some new input? And I would say yes, because I want to make it simple for you. The bunny hop is like like a rocket scientist for, for uh, skill tutorials. It's so complicated. There are some own words and terms uh, and like theories and the English bunny hop, the American, the hips to bars and uh, the scope, the shove and I don't know, I've seen so many uh, things and words and often it looks really complicated and the normal mountain bike rider who doesn't attend bunny hop contest and who is not a trials rider, he really doesn't need a very high bunny hop and in many tutorials it's all about these high bunny hops where you have the front wheel really really high and when you jump up with your legs your hips are um, at the bars and you're doing a huge bunny hop but to be honest if you ride a trail and you want to use a good bunny hop technique you don't need these high bunny hops Some elements which are important for bunny hop contest bunny hops, you don't need it for your trail bunny hops. And this is an important thing to know when we talk about this simple bunny hop I'm gonna teach you now. So, as you're watching this video, I know you've seen some bunny hop tutorials, you know the theory, you know how a bunny hop looks like, and um, I want to keep it simple now with three advices, three things you can do to have a good bunny hop which you can use on the trail. And to start off with the first one, it's our first point, the load. I think you know this thing from other tutorials, some American tutorials they say the stomp or the load. You use your body weight with a dynamic motion from the tall position down and then you load your suspension and your tires and you can use this to get into the manual and that's a good thing to do. Really important if you have a long bike, an e-mountain bike or a long reach on your mountain bike. Now we want to get into the manual which is a, an important step for the bunny hop and my advice is our keyword push. The first word was load, your suspension, load your bike and then you push your bars away from you. And this helps to get into the manual position and use your body weight and accelerate your bike to the front. It's really important to practice this motion to push your bike to the front and then your front wheel gets up and your body position will be above your axle of the rear wheel and in a low position and that is really important. Maybe you're sitting there and, and question why not use the legs to accelerate to push your bike forward. There's one important reason. If you do this, if you do this with your legs, then your legs will get straight immediately. And that's a big problem because the next point you want to jump and you need some motion range in the legs to jump and so please concentrate on pushing with your arms and then you have still bent legs and you're ready for the next step. So we had the load, we had the push and now we are in this manual position not as far back as uh, really a great manual but it's some kind of manual position and then you need to jump. This happens while your front wheel is still in a motion getting up. 
If you haven't practiced rear wheel lifts or some bunny, bunny hops, it's important to wear uh, protection for the shins and for the knees because you can lose your pedals. Concentrate on having good traction, pushing your shoes against the pedals. That's an important point. But you really need to have this jumping motion. And then, if your front wheel is coming up and you are starting this jump motion, automatically your bars, stem and your hips will get closer. Not a moving light, get your hips to the bars. This is not really important for normal trail bunny hops. Saying again, we are not trials riders. We don't need to have some big gaps or something to jump over. Good. I show you how to practice and what the results are looking like. I'm going to show you in a short version. We have the load, we have the push, and you have the jump. Again, simple, these three points, the load, push and the jump. Now puzzling it together in a jogging pace, right. load, push, jump. You will notice your front wheel is landing first. This is absolutely okay and when you're doing small bunny hops for your line choice and trails for small bumps or um, obstacles, it's always okay to have a bit nose dive landing when, when your first front wheel lands first. It's really normal and the trail normally goes downhill so it's no, not a problem. It's like really a good thing to do. Load, push, jump. There are a few options how to practice step by step. One thing would be to have these uh, two points with the push and the jump that you practice this isolated. You could also do some preload jumps. Preload jump. And then doing this preload jump together with the manual. Like the manual with preload jump. My tip is really concentrate on the jumping motion with your legs. You can practice it without the bike. And this is the key point for many riders who are practicing the bunny hop and they have, have some struggles because they unintentionally they do like more jumping the hips to the bars and they're doing like this motion instead of this motion. So please take your handy smartphone, your GoPro, film yourself and take a look what you're doing and then you can uh, get better from then on. When you're practicing the manual with pushing the bars forward really dynamically, it can happen that your front wheel rises up very quickly. So if you're practicing wheelies already, you know pull your back brake and your front wheel comes down and this is really important. If you've never done this, please practice this isolated. Do some mini manuals and then always pull the brake and practice the feeling of getting the front wheel back on the ground and that can save you from falling on your back. So to summarize, we had these Three key points for simple bunny up, which you can use on the trail for normal obstacles. My tip is if you have a really, really uh, large, huge lock and it's like really high, and you maybe think I could do a bunny up over it, I wouldn't try it because I've seen some really good riders crashing because they, they thought, oh, I can do the bunny up over it, and then the timing wasn't perfect and they were. Lay, lying on the ground, so you have to, yeah, have to see what's the risk and reward. And I use a lot of bunny hops on the trail, but for really high obstacles, sometimes I say, no, I'm not a trials rider, and I don't want to win the bunny hop contest.
the load, loading your suspension, the push, pushing your bars away from me really dynamically, and the jump with the power of your legs. And then puzzling these pieces together, you have a small trail bunny hop and it's really useful and it's not complicated like more elements or puzzles which makes high bunny hops for normal riders really too complicated. So let me know in the comments what you think about this bunny hop technique. Uh, did you try it this way? Um, if you try it now, please let me know if it worked out for you. You know you have to practice a lot. Um, like 10 minutes every day is better than just two hours on Sunday. And yeah, I'm really excited. And please like and subscribe if you like the content. And there will be more tips for your skills and other mountain bike topics. See you. Bye.